Hi, it's Lance Lewis with Champion Video, and we are here for another live interview. I'm um, pretty excited to bring you our guest tonight. We'll get to that in a moment, though. Um, again, I'm with Champion Video. We're a live event company, which means we go to figure skating shows, dance recitals, keynote speeches, concerts, uh, musical concerts. Uh, you name it, we do it. Uh, we've even recorded funerals. Um, we're a live event company, which means we usually go out to an event, um, take care of the recording, and then bring it back to the studio, and then deliver it either digitally or on DVD or Blu-ray. And uh, we've been in the event business for about 20 years now. And like everybody else in the event business, our world has come to a screech, screeching halt. So got a little extra time on my hands. So I, I said to my wife about four, four days ago, I'm like, hey, I'm going to do a live show every night. <laughs> Now, uh, not sure how the how, how um, uh, the live show is going to continue uh, because uh, we're, we're looking into some remote options, but because um, our governor in Wisconsin is going to be declaring tomorrow is going to be declaring a stay at home order. Um, so if you haven't heard that yet, uh, then I'm breaking the news to you right now. And basically what it says is that if you are not if you are not an essential business, then uh, you got to stay home. Um, it's not a complete lockdown. You can still go out for groceries. You can still um, go get medical help if you need it. Um, but uh, they, he basically doesn't want, um, uh, or the state doesn't want us uh, out congregating. So I do want to remind everybody, even though we do have a guest uh, at our studio today, um, and our studio is in our home, so uh, we make sure to clean the area before our guest arrives. We ask that, them, that they use hand sanitizer when they first get here. We uh, make sure that we're keeping a social distance from them, a physical dis distance from them, and we will clean after they leave. Even the headset that they wear, those have been wiped down, the microphones, the table, the whole works. Uh, we are taking it serious and so should you. Uh, all right, so uh, next thing I want to bring up here is it would be really helpful to us if you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you know, we're not asking for money yet. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, it helps us build up a following. It helps us meet the criteria. And maybe down the road, maybe that's something we want to look into. Uh, YouTube currently requires in order to monetize a channel that you have to have a thousand subscribers and over 4,000 hours watch within the last year, I believe. That's not the only way to monetize YouTube, but it's one of the ways. So you're, by you subscribing, that helps me out tremendously and uh, really hope that you can do that. All right. So tonight in the studio, I've got Andrew Schmitz. He's the co-founder of of proceed.app and we're going to be talking with him. Now I've known Andrew for a long time. We're going to get into it. Uh, so sit back, relax, and let me introduce you to Andrew Schmitz. Andrew, how you doing? Hey, Lance. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. I love getting together with you. We don't, we don't get to do it often, but when we do, we sit and talk for hours, right? Yeah. Geez. Uh, you know, you, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it usually, uh, doesn't happen too often. Usually I run into you on a gig or something like that. <laughs> right. So the first time I ever met you, um, and, and one of the reasons you're one of my favorite people. Now I keep saying that every night. You're one of my favorite. <laughs> That's because I'm starting with all my favorite people. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so you were 13, I believe. And I was doing a job at Xavier High School um, and uh, in the theater. Uh, I don't remember which show. Um, I don't, I'm pretty sure it was one of the Xavier shows, probably maybe Christmas Star. Yeah, I'm not sounds sure. right. Um, Could have been Passion Play. But here's this third. 13 year old kid so you weren't even in high school yet you weren't even you were like still at the middle or like uh saint mary's uh saint middle? joe's saint yeah. joe's okay yep. yeah so you were at saint joe's still and you were like consulting on the lights doing the lights so in that that same i think it was around that same time i go and do a job at a um like a retirement home a little small gig. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you were 13 or how old you were. You remember this yeah, one? Yeah, I do. Yeah, the yeah. Thompson Center. Yeah, 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 Thompson yeah. Center. And, I mean, there's, you know, like, uh, here's Andrew Schmitz doing um, sound for him. Like, I think, or was it lights? What lights, were you doing? Yeah. Lights, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, were, you were just into everything, and you've kind of continued that throughout your life here um, where, you, where you've really just been a go-getter. Um, so we're going to get into the pre you. proceed. Yeah, you bet. You, uh, we're going to get into the proceed app in a little bit. Um, but, uh, let's, let's see what has happened since you've been 13. <laughs> you, you, I mean, you're so busy. How did you even graduate high school? I mean, how did you juggle all this stuff, Andrew? Well, you know, um, yeah, I did get involved in technical theater and production pretty early. So it was actually probably before I turned 13, but, um, been involved for a long time, learned from a lot of great people, gotten a lot of gr uh, great opportunities and chances. Um, you know, I did uh, 
not have to take like a regular job during uh, high school. I didn't have to work at a grocery store or anything like that because I was busy enough with production and getting paid to do certain gigs around the area, which is where I'd run into you all the time. It seemed like you were always at every gig too, um, which is awesome. Champion video, we're everywhere. (laughs) For real though, that's what it felt like. I mean, geez. You must Um, have had a small circle. (laughs) Well, you know, it is kind of a small circle. um, And and actually, you know, I have, um, well, since, since graduating high school, I had a really cool opportunity to to head out to New York city and work with some awesome people out there for a while. And, um, and with that, you know, you, you do really realize how small the whole oh, circle yeah. is. Like, I think when I, I worked at Radio City Music Hall for one of their seasons uh, with the Rockettes and the uh, light board. How old were you when you did this? Uh, this was, uh, I was like 20 or 19. Man, what a great opportunity for uh, you. Maybe it's, maybe it's 20 or 21. I've, I've done Let's say it was 35. That's still a great opportunity. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. But the, the light board programmer... Um, he, he was from Oshkosh, you know, and, yeah. you know, new friends and, yeah. you know, had overlapping uh, connections there, which, uh, you know, it is a really small world, especially in the production industry. Yeah. So I had something really bizarre happen to me when I was a, a, a young man. Um, I had taken a trip to Japan and um, my friend that I was meeting there who lived there, um, you know, she had arranged for me to uh, hang out with a bunch of the house moms because they wanted to learn more about English. And so all I had to do was they would ask me questions. I'd just talk with them. But then they took me on you a... You talk, Lance? Yeah, yeah, hard? yeah, right. It was right up, <laughs> right up my alley. No problem at all. I could do this all day long. Uh, side note, Kimberly and I said maybe our next show is just going to be me for 24 hours. <laughs> People can chime in, talk to me if they want. But bottom line is, uh, you know, I'll just talk for 24 hours. I could totally do it. I'll be there. Yeah. Um, at least for 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> that's about as long as... So that's Kimberly's limit is about 10 now. <laughs> so um, so here I am in Japan and they take me to thank me for, you know, coming in and talking with them for a while. Uh, they take me on a tour of Japan and we have this guidebook we're looking at. And so I'm going through this tour of kind of some iconic housing and, and stuff and some pretty cool stuff. And I look on the back of the book and, I'm, and now at the time I was going to UW Oshkosh. Um, that's where I was going to college. And um, I look at uh, the back of the book, and on the back of the book, it said the book was written by Lane Earns of Oshkosh, Wisconsin. <laughs> Talk about a surreal wow. experience. Yeah, now, yeah. as it turns out, there was a kind of a direct connection. You know, uh, my friend was the, the teacher assistant for sure. Fumiko Earns. Her husband was Lane Earns. They both worked at the college. Anyway. Enough about me. Uh, yeah, so no, that's, cool. that's really cool. Though. That's a small world. Yeah. Sure. So did you skip the whole college route then? So I did go to college. Uh, I took a year off between mm-hmm. uh, high school and college. Um, decided to go to college. Uh, then after three semesters, I was offered um, a really great job at a software company in town. Um, cool. Kind of weighed some things back and forth in my head and decided to... to drop uh college to make room for this job and then also i had a side business that i was kind of really interested in yeah um and just didn't have the bandwidth to take care of everything so kind of decided you know school will take my money no matter how old i am um so um kind of made the jump at that point and haven't looked back since um but uh yeah so i did go to college i went to st norbert and and uw fox for a while all right, so now I'm going to embarrass you a little bit, or, sure. or try to. Weren't you like named uh, Fox City's most eligible bachelor or something, or most eligible something under thirty or something? <laughs> no, I, what <laughs> you know what I'm about? talking about? Do you know? What no. I'm, come on, you're, there was something about that, wasn't there? Like uh, bachelor. Well, I don't know geez. about bachelor. <laughs> I'm making, Not, I'm making I mean, some I'm stuff up. Happily engaged. Right. right now, no. So. Yeah. 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 We're gonna get to that. Uh, <laughs> so, but no, weren't you like? Didn't you get some kind of award for being? Um, and I, you know, again, not bachelor, but um, like uh, something under thirty or something. Blah blah blah. Well, if think. you didn't get the award, you probably should have. Uh, how old are you, Andrew? Appreciate that. I'm 24. So 24, and um, I know a number of several years ago, you were making some big cha-ching working for a company. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a, had a few things going on. I had my, my side businesses and then mm-hmm. a really great job. Uh, that I appreciated their employees very well and, and compensated yeah. them very well as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that... It's not all about money, oh, but, no, uh, no. but doesn't I, hurt. It, it was it was definitely <laughs> um, I, I felt pretty good about myself being uh, 
Yeah. I'm like 20 years old and, and you know. Yeah. Being able to pay for gas. Yeah, pay for gas, <laughs> bought a new car, you yeah. know, all the stupid things you do when you're 20 years yeah. old. With yeah, your four money. years ago. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, like, I'm a fast learner. Yeah. So. Um, um, you, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm really happy for you that you found success in the different things you've done, because a lot of times people like you who have a lot going on and you have a lot of talent and everybody around you knows you have the talent. We see a lot of times I'll see these people not be able to figure out how to make money doing it, not be able to make a living doing what they love to do. Yeah. I think that's a big part of being an entrepreneur, right? Yep. Um, you, you build a business around a lifestyle that you want to have. Um, usually, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's why a lot, like the happiest entrepreneurs do that. Yep. Um, and that has been, you know, something I've been chasing for the last uh, however many years with, with the businesses that I've been pursuing is, yeah. you know, what kind of lifestyle do I want and how do, can I build a business to achieve that? Yeah, and you and I have talked a number of times um, where I've asked you some questions about that. And, uh, you know, you are pretty committed to, um, you know, making sure that it's a viable business and that um, you're not just doing a labor of love, but a labor of love that you can make a living at. For sure. I think that's huge, right? Um, and I only do that today because of the huge mistakes I've made in the past, right? right? Um, Again, only 24 years of You don't have a lot of past behind well, you. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, I started my first business when I was in like middle school. I was a DJ. And I sold doing fruit that. door to door when I was four. <laughs> True right? story. Yeah, True story. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, True I had story. popcorn. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. But yeah, once you once you get that little bug, right? It's like yeah. I, in fourth grade, I remember having a twenty in my pocket, and I just thought, "Oh, this is cool." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, and, you know, and knowing that you know you you set the uh, you create your own opportunity. Yeah, you know? uh, and you can you can create more opportunity for yourself and and you know decide to take a vacation if you want yeah. um, but it's all about you you're deciding but you also take all the responsibility right exactly things are going down you know you, you gotta, gotta own yeah. it yep <laughs> all right let's get into proceed.app tell me about it what's it all about yeah so proceed is a knowledge management system built for small teams uh, and we um basically focus on two things that make us really unique I actually I should say this it's a cross-platform web application built for small businesses uh, to capture and share knowledge Two things make us unique. Uh, first, we are built for small businesses, so mm -hmm. we've cut out all the like enterprise fluff that you don't need as a small business owner, and we've put in some unique kind of strategies to help make it more practical to use a knowledge management system. Mm -hmm. um, and secondly, we focus on visuals, so making it really easy to capture and share knowledge using amazing visuals um, in your um, knowledge documents. Now, what, what do people use us for? Well, small businesses use us for training their employees, um, for onboarding new employees, uh, and probably one of the coolest ways that we found people use us is for succession planning. So right. being able to capture the knowledge that your rock star employees that have been there for 30, you know, 40 years even, um, the knowledge that they have before, before they walk out the door and retire or take a new opportunity. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, that's the, uh, that's kind of the gist of what proceed.app is um we're a tech startup so yeah. we um you know are are getting started with our first batch of early customers uh today yeah. uh, which nice. has been really exciting but um proceed actually started probably like um as an early prototype like two years ago okay um, and that was that was um the side hustle that i had yeah. going on when i was working at a at a Another, full, another, another software place. company. Nice. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have you just kind of repeat that, but take out all of your business acumen. You're not talking to a business owner. Sure. Anymore. <laughs> my my niece might be tuning in right now. Yeah. Okay. Now she may or may not be one of your clients. She might be one of your clients in the future. Yeah, you never of know. So yeah. give us the give us the the like user um, sure. uh, description, not it, the business analytics. Yeah. So it looks and feels like Snapchat. Okay. Um, and so you, uh, people who are familiar with Snapchat, instead of getting Snapchat out to like tell your friends what you're doing, um, you can get Snapchat out and step by step document something about the business that you work in. Yep. Uh, and then you can share that snap with, okay. uh, you know, the the central knowledge base of the business. So Snapchat's like when you snap someone, it 
it disappears after 24 hours or right. after they open it. So obviously ours doesn't do that. And we want want people to be able to hold on to the knowledge that they have. Yep. Um, but yeah, it works much like Snapchat. So, um, like so if I had something I want my employees to know, I could take a picture, write a description, save that into the, the content management system. Um, and then at some point say to someone that's, you know, wants to repeat that skill, Hey, check this out. These are your instructions and they can look at pictures, uh, and the instructions, um, as needed. Yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. Right? So it's an easy way of, um, you know, capturing the knowledge and then distributing it to the people that need it. Okay. Nice. What gave you the idea for that? Uh, yeah, so I love small businesses. I've been a small business owner for a while. Um, I've worked in small businesses my whole life. I've seen the challenges that they have with, you know, getting knowledge um, mm -hmm. to the to the right people at the right time. Um, and so uh, kind of as a side hustle, I, I would help small businesses build training materials. So either like training websites, manuals, training videos, whatever it was. Um, and so I kind of did that as a consultant for a while okay. and then realized, uh, you know, there's a better way and it's through yeah. technology. So, yeah. And there were a few other obstacles, um, that I hit with that model that told me like, uh, you know, this should be an app uh, and it would be nice. better as an app. And that's that, kind of where it started. And where are you guys at in the process right now? You yes. had talked about some early adopters. Well, yeah. So in January we rolled out to early adopters. So started the company in May. Um, I quit my job in March last year. <laughs> you quit one of your jobs. <laughs> well, I quit my full full time Cause, income. Because <laughs> doing this is a job, right? Yeah, for sure. Well, the, yeah, very very much so. Uh, so I, I was fortunate enough to be able to quit my job in uh, March. Uh, it took from March to May to find a team. Found the initial team for Proceed. Built a prototype over the summer. Threw away the prototype in. August oh, gosh. and then uh, just like rebuilt. scrapped it complete. Yeah, and that's kind of normal in okay. the in the tech tech space is you, you usually would build some kind of prototype and then f you take what you learned from it okay. to start new. Yeah. Uh, so then over the fall into the winter, we um, with a new team developed uh, the um, the product that we have today. Yeah. Uh, so we hit the market. We're in the app stores. Um, wow. Uh, in January, and we've this coming just, January. No, no, we, last January. We, we, okay. We're in the app stores right oh, now. Oh, nice. Um, and then, uh, yeah, yeah, we've been we've been enrolling uh, new early adopters since then. Okay, and um, where do you kind of hope it goes? Gosh, um, I mean, there, there's a <laughs> a million things we have to de-risk first, right? <laughs> um, so I'm I'm hoping that it. It goes well uh, right, and right, it right. Can, uh, can sustain itself and become a viable business. Um, we still have a lot of assumptions that we need to crack yet, but um, you know, wh where does it go? I, wa oh, I want to you know, build a business that uh, Appleton's proud to have yeah. um, and, and the Fox Valley. Um, you know, like we, I, I want to be able to have employees and, and yeah. be able to support uh, lots of um, Lots of small businesses around yeah. the world with, with better knowledge management. You strike me as the kind of guy that has a lot of ideas. True. Yeah. yeah it's dangerous. <laughs> right. You too, Lance. <laughs> I have been accused of that. Uh, and most of them not so good. <laughs> but uh, what's it like um, with so many ideas and knowing that you don't have infinite time? Yeah. Well, bandwidth is um, something I think about all the time. Um, knowing that, yeah, you're right. And as I get older here, um, it's harder to stay up later and, yeah. you know, <laughs> sleep less. So, right. um, yeah, I mean, it, it is tricky, but as an entre entrepreneur, you have to always think about, you know, um, what, uh, what is your best opportunity or chance for success and make sure that whatever you're doing on a daily basis is moving the needle. What would you say your biggest obstacle is? Um, and I'm, I'm talking, I'm not talking about proceed.app uh, in general, I'm or I, in specific. I'm talking in general in your life. What's one of your biggest obstacles yeah, or challenges? Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> that's a good question. I think, you know, something that I learned relatively recently is uh, as a leader, you know, and looking, reflecting on past things that I've done, like um, it's really important to, to have a clear vision, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if your vision isn't clear as the leader, um, it isn't going to work, especially when you start working with other people. So yeah. making sure, um, making sure your, vi your, your vision is vivid 
and that mm -hmm. uh, you you transfer that vivid vision to the people that are working with you. So tying that into a challenge, you feel that's a challenging area? For yeah. You? Well, I think I've I've come a long way on that, but mm -hmm. that definitely is something I learned over the last I would say even twelve months. The okay. Other thing is you have to be patient, and that's really hard. Um, like for me, especially. You strike right? me as a patient guy. Well, though. <laughs> I think I think you know I can be patient, but uh, you know it, it's tricky. I mean, it, businesses don't you know they don't become successes overnight. Yeah. Um, and I think you know previously I you know when when in my other ventures I I could have you know maybe waited a little longer okay. with it and have been a little bit more patient. Okay. But uh, yeah, those are probably my two personal biggest challenges that I, that mm -hmm. I face. What uh, are you a reader? Do you like to I read? I don't read. Um, <laughs> I hate reading. Actually, that's okay. I'll be the first to say that. Yeah, um, that's all right. Yeah, I'm not a huge, huge reader. I understand the importance of reading, though, and and um, yeah. I just don't. Yeah, for what whatever reason, I don't know if. Yeah, you know, I just I just can't latch on to reading very easily, mm -hmm. uh, which is a big part of why I think I love proceed so much, because uh, it's all about using visuals. Yeah. you know, in, in in knowledge management. No, my guess is you're probably you probably are a reader, but not the way you thought I was asking, uh, because when I said are you a reader, you probably thought I meant books, right? Well, text, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, but um, because you know you know a lot of stuff, you don't get that kind of information. Uh, through osmosis, right? You have to take sure. it in somehow. So is it, uh, what is your primary way in which you gain information? Is it through mentoring? Is it through, you know, um, websites? Is it through what? You know, how Gosh, do you get information? I mean, uh, I think mentorship is definitely probably one of my favorite ways to gain mm -hmm. information. Um, I think uh, <laughs> YouTube pretty much has taught me everything. That, so you like to um, watch stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything I use on a daily basis, technical technical skills wise, I, gosh, I yep. probably learned from YouTube <laughs> or just, you know, getting in there and doing it. Do you feel like you're pretty good at, uh, you know, weeding out the the not good information? Because that's, that's a challenge, right? That, is, have, that can be tricky, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. we live in a time where we have basically all of human knowledge at our fingertips at lightning speed. Definitely. The slowest part of that is you reading the screen. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah. and what's interesting about that is, so I grew up in the 80s, um, was a teen in the 80s, and uh, high school in the 80s, you know, the whole deal. Um, love the 80s. What are the 80s? Yeah. <laughs> music. It's great <laughs> music. You'd love it. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Um, but uh, during, so I grew up without the internet. Um, we had very, very early signs of the internet coming, but not anything that we latched on to. It really wasn't until the 90s that, you know, we we're in the AOL chat rooms and stuff like that. Um, Dial up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nope, for sure. But um, so I remember when there wasn't internet, and sometimes you kind of get stuck in a way of thinking. And whereas my wife, Kimberly, she has always, kind of grown up with the internet, but more importantly, she has that attitude. If that's, if it's something she doesn't know, she can look it up, yeah. whether it's a recipe or how to, you know, change and, uh, you know, change, do some electrical work. Um, you know, and so she can just, she has that attitude that, you know, someone has already done it and they've already made a YouTube video and she can find it and learn it. <clears throat> I did not grow up with that. So it was a transition that I made over the last 10 years, really, where anything that pops in my head and I always have stuff popping in my head, right? Mm -hmm. Now I know there's a place I can go. Uh, but uh, proceed.app um, is, well, I just want to jump back to that for a second. Um, it's uh, in the app store. You've got some early adopters that are, that are um, you know, helping you fine tune it. Um, how, would a company, uh, how would a company get in touch with you? Sure, yeah, our website is proceed.app, so uh, they can check us out there. Mm -hmm. um, I also um, can be reached by email. It's andrew at proceed.app. Mm -hmm. uh, happy to talk with anyone interested in talking with me. So, yeah. <laughs> um, But, yeah, no, we're, we're really in this kind of cool phase right now. Our product is shaping or taking new shapes every week, um, and, like, the early adopters that we're working with, they get to help us shape our product, which is kind of kind of cool um yeah especially like you know we work with like coffee shops you know we cool. have a coffee shop in menasha that's uh that uses us and the feedback that they've been able to give us you know literally changes the software in 24 hours yeah and um you know it's like you're you know for that coffee shop owner it's like they're getting custom software right uh, at a 
you know, very, very good rate. Right, so. right, right. Yeah. Early adopter. Yeah, so they're exactly. helping you, you're helping them, uh, and you're going to crank out a great product. Um, so I'm really excited to see where it goes. Um, and uh, you were gracious enough to give me a copy or, or a, a, absolutely a, not yeah. a copy, but a uh, whatchamajigger, a, a, a way in. Uh, <laughs> so I was checking it out. Um, then I got really busy, and now I got a lot of time. So <laughs> yeah. looking forward to digging yeah, back sure. into it. Um, it's crazy how that happened. Yeah, and I think it's a brilliant idea um, because you saw a need and then you went after it, and that's awesome. Um, let's talk coronavirus just real quickly here. Well, maybe not quickly. We'll see. How has that? <laughs> how is that? You know, basically, you woke up one day and the whole world is different. Um, how has it been different for you personally and or uh, the company? You know, um, for me personally, it really hasn't changed a whole mm -hmm. lot from a day to day thing, right? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll be transparent. I'm I'm used to making very little money and and you know <laughs> not uh, not having steady income uh, at least for the last twelve months. Yeah. Um, I'm um, used to working from home. Uh -huh. uh, I've just recently proceeded got an office in January. So okay. um, I've, you know, actually am coming, you know, a little change because I was working in the office oh, yeah. every day. And now, yeah. now I'm back at home where I was mm -hmm. for the last 10 months. Um, so, yeah, overall, from a day-to-day -day thing, it hasn't affected us too much, fortunately. Mm -hmm. um, we have some really solid early adopters, and actually some of them, because of this free time now, yeah. um, are able to give us, you know, even more attention, which is, um, you know, we're really grateful for that. Yeah. However, you know, there are some, like, delayed purchase decisions and sure. delayed meetings and yeah, networking people are unsure. things. Yeah, and so, you know, they don't want to, either they can't meet with me because they're busy taking care of a bunch of other stuff or whatever it is. Um, but, you know, honestly, when um, a quote that I heard a while back that I kind of liked was, you know, entrepreneurs make um, opportunity out, out of chaos, right? Yes. And I'm not yes. saying this is chaos, but, no, you know, it, it is, it is, is kind is. of chaotic. Absolutely. And, um, and so for us, it's, it's about, and something we spent some thinking time on last week was, you know, where do we fit in to help other people out during yeah. this, right? I think a lot of people are asking that. Yeah, and, and it's it's good. I, yeah. I think it's awesome. Um, and this actually, like, it's times like these that entrepreneurship and problem-solving, creative problem-solving are critical, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think I think it's really important. So for us, like, it's figuring out, well, where, where do we fit in? Um, an example of something that we rolled out after this brainstorming session was, um, helping restaurants with kind of a creative way of offering some new, um, uh, a new experience to their patrons that no longer can go into the restaurant. Um, and that's yeah. through like, um, step-by-step -step how to make food, oh, yeah. um, using our app. But basically the idea is that restaurants can package together, uh, ingredients like proportioned ingredients from the, you know, ingredients mm -hmm. that they have. And then sell their customers these packs with a, a link to a proceeds workflow on how to you know build that recipe. Basically, giving um, their customers the the blue apron or the Hello Fresh experience, yeah. but you know supporting a local business. Um, so you know it's those kind of things that we're like, well, we have this technology, we have um, the idea, you know, and and we can ha we have this opportunity to help yeah. local businesses that we love and mm -hmm. and care about. Um, you know, through our technology. So it's those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, you had mentioned, you know, the quotes that you, the quote that you like, my, one of my favorite quotes, which is apropos here as well is you can't always change what happens to you, but you can always change what you do about it. Yeah. And I'm sure I slaughtered the quote, but <laughs> yeah. uh, I think in, in school, like elementary school or something, there's like, you'll see the sign, uh, on the, on the teacher's wall that says life is, you know, 10% what happens to you and 90% what you do about it or something yeah. like that. I'm probably slaughtering <laughs> I love these. those kind of things, though, because yeah. it's so true, you know, and, yeah. and uh, you can't control what other people say, but, you can, you know, you can control how, you know, what you do about it. It's your reactions that you right. can control. And, and I think that's probably the biggest difference between people who are entrepreneurs and people who are not. Um, is you feel like you have, uh, you, that you are the locus of control. Um, and, uh, I, I know you said you're not much of a reader, but if you ever want a quick read, uh, a, a book that my father told me to read back when he saw the entrepreneurial spirit developing in me was think and grow rich by Napoleon Hill. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. 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 And I mean, this book is, I don't know, it's like from the sixties or something, <laughs> yeah. probably not that far back, but it's an older book. Um, and, uh, quick read, but it's all about, you know, just 
by thinking you can grow rich and rich is defined not just as money but whatever rich is to you whether it's um friendships or um you know uh, uh philanthropy or whatever the case is you know whatever makes you feel full and rich yeah um yeah so you know by thinking of creative solutions um that really is something and you're definitely that kind of guy and that's why you're going to be successful pretty much no matter what you do i appreciate that I, yeah. I, I, we'll see maybe well, i'll be back on the oh, show in a couple of years oh <laughs> I, i'm i'm i've got the prediction skills so on Good. two nights ago <laughs> was it two nights ago i was doing a maybe last night i was doing a quick little stinger before um the start of our live show and i said um i what i think is coming down the horn here down the down the pipe is um that we are going to have a stay-at-home order and i guessed at wednesday uh-huh. guess guess when it's going to go into effect tuesday uh, maybe tuesday wednesday he hasn't announced it yet uh, it, it's i've seen conflicting reports so yeah i'm telling you i i know things <laughs> I, i'm connected i know yeah. champion video we're everywhere yeah that's right <laughs> even in your head so i'm just looking at my notes here um anything else you want to talk about with proceed app anything you know i don't want to leave anything yeah, you know, out I, there. I don't want this to be uh too much of a commercial for it either right right uh, you know it's um yeah, I mean it, it's we're we're having a really good time. We'll see see where it goes, and if people yeah. want to follow along, we um, most of our like social media is um, you know more about not really about our product, but more about our journey, you know, yeah. and our culture. So um, yeah, I'd encourage people to follow us on their Facebook and LinkedIn yeah. and all, all of them. But um, I don't think people really know how much that matters. So, yeah. yeah, that's a good point. It really does. Um, you know, we live in a world, uh, advertising world, and it's always been the case, but uh, especially on social media recently, which is, you know, highest bidder wins, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, and uh, it's hard to reach through on these channels, and they really control a lot yeah. of people's attention these days. So. Yeah, um, well, and it, and it's easy, right? You know, you can you 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 go in, you catch up with your family, you catch up with your friends. But when you hit like on a business's page, what that does is it helps bring that attention to um uh, to that business. Yeah. Uh, and you know, just as an example, um, last night uh, we had again or- Aaron Voris on the show. He was a singer songwriter, and uh, played some tunes. And he had someone who was watching, um, and that person reached out to me today and talked about maybe some things we might be able to collaborate with in the future. And, and of yeah. course, we're always open to that um, because business is really about relationships. And Absolutely. social media, all about relationships. So, yeah. um, yes, uh, if you are watching, uh, whether it's during our live show or um, in the in a playback, please go to uh, proceed.app, um, check it out. Um, if you think it's interesting, maybe you share it on your Facebook page. These are things that we can do free. It's like smiling, right? Everybody's got a free <laughs> smile in their back pocket. It yeah. uh, doesn't cost anything to do, but that's a way to help local businesses, um, you know, and uh, check them out on Facebook, like their page. So you have a, a business page for Proceed. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, we have a business page for Proceed. Uh, yeah, feel free to like it. And if you if you uh, notice anything about the website or the page mm-hmm. or anything that you love or hate, you know, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about feedback. I love yeah. on that right now. Yeah, you, I think you and I are opposite on that. I don't want to know. Don't tell me. <laughs> Just <laughs> let it continue to be bad. <laughs> You're going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> uh, and yeah. I'm, I'm only half kidding. <laughs> like yeah. there's a big part of me that uh, I'd rather, you know, I feel dumb if I didn't figure it out myself. Um, so uh, just back to coronavirus here for a moment. Where do you think this ends? How do you think this ends? Well, you know, I hope that uh, I hope that this wraps up relatively quickly, and um, I hope I hope people stay at home and. Yeah. And uh, you know, do the best uh, with their. They're not calling it social distancing anymore, are they? Oh, I don't know. I, yeah, that's physical changing. distancing right. or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I, and I, I hope that we can, as a as a country, you know, let this move past us quickly. Yeah. Um, but gosh, I don't know. I mean, a lot of businesses are going to be affected Hurting. by this, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. significantly. Um, and yeah. so, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, personally just kind of concerned about. Like those restaurants that you love and, and the, you know, yep. bowling alleys and, mm-hmm. you know, these things that we kind of take for granted, you know. Um, yeah. I, I don't even think it, they can make it through. <laughs> I don't even think it's really hit everybody, right? Yeah. 
because uh, I was looking out my uh, uh, my back door, service uh, um, surveying my kingdom. <laughs> That's what I like to. So my wife and I just bought a house, right? Landowner. And, uh, yeah, and we actually have a yard more than we would have really wanted, but the, it came with the house. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, if I look out my back my back door, you know, I've got a little bit of a yard. I can look at. I'm like surveying my kingdom. I've named all the critters that are in the backyard. <laughs> but there's also a company that's you know further back past the tree line, and I but I can see them. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, you know, tomorrow, they're not essential. That company's closed. Yeah. And everybody we see going into that company, that means they don't have income anymore. Now, of course, they can apply for unemployment and uh, the federal government's working on a package. And, you know, something's going to happen. We know that. And we don't know the extent or, to, you know, how that'll all play out. It's yet. all these unknowns that I think cause yes. us so much stress on people yep. and, and stress uh, just on us as society. And, you know, yeah. that that's going to be tough to break. So you being the kind of guy who has um, worked at home for, you know, part of his 24 years, I don't know why I keep bringing that up. I think I think it's awesome, and I don't. I yeah. I've never judged people based on their age. I mean, some of our best camera operators started with me when they were fifteen, and they were pretty great then. So um, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, uh, but you're you're the kind of guy that um, uh, you know you have work from home. Uh, you know what it's like to kind of be your own boss. What kind of advice do you have for anybody that might be watching? Uh, well, um, physical advice, uh, you know, I love being by the window. Um, you know, that, that's actually getting sunlight in while yeah. you're working at home is a, a big part of, um, yep. I think for me, at least an important part of my success. Mm -hmm. Um, noise canceling headphones are awesome. <laughs> um, yep. I think, uh, you know, I personally, when, when I worked from home and this hasn't been the case for the last week, but when I worked from home, um, you know, for months and months and months, uh, making sure that you change clothes still. <laughs> no, people, is actually, people think you're joking. That's a true, true no, story. It's, yeah. it's actually like you shouldn't, it, it, you're so much less productive if you don't keep your morning routine, yeah. um, which includes, you know, whatever you do in the morning, but changing clothes and putting on clothes that are more professional. Um, so, you know, there were days, you know, when I would, you know, put on my <laughs> work clothes, um, you know, button down shirt, khakis or whatever, yeah. um, you know, and then at the end of the day, take them right off. But yep. uh, it's still, you know, kind of a silly, but well, uh, no, but for you, it, it gave you a distinction between I'm working, I'm not working. Yeah. And I think, I think that is like the one thing that is so tricky about working from home is now suddenly w home and work are intimately combined yeah. and yep. you have to, you have to break that apart. Yeah. Um, so, and I mentioned this in a couple of our other shows prior to this, um, but I'm, I'm the opposite on that. I, I kind of, I wake up whenever I wake up and I think it's done great for my beauty. Sure. sure <laughs> I'm really yeah. 80 years old. <laughs> hey, listen, sure. but you know, you've built, again, you built that business around the lifestyle that you want, right. which is awesome. Yep. You know, my mom said to me when I was really young, well, she said, I'm going to tell you two stories cause it's funny. Awesome. Uh, or, okay. I think it's funny <laughs> and, th and that's okay. So, uh, first the one that's totally not related. And while I tell you that one, I'm probably going to forget the one I'm supposed to tell you. It's already slipping from my mind. I can feel it. So <laughs> the one, the one, uh, one of the stories for sure, which has nothing to do with what we were just talking about, but apparently my mom had just spanked me. Uh, because I was being naughty or something. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I went over to the window and I looked up to the sky and I said, God, did you see that? Did you see what she did to me? <laughs> And what did he say? Uh, what did he say? Yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you what she she didn't do for a while. I think she was afraid to, you know, give me the spankings. I think I, I think I knew how to how to push those buttons and stuff. Anyway, I don't remember that, but she told me that. Um, now, I, and I do remember the other thing she told me. Um, and and this is something I've tried living by. She said, Lance, you can be whatever you want. Just make sure you're happy doing it. Yeah. And and that's yeah, that's pretty great. Cool. That's great advice. And you know, I, I mean, some people are happy making money. You know, that's what makes them happy. Some people are happy building something. Some people are happy working with their hands. Um, you know, whatever it, it means for someone, that's, Gosh, that's cool. Carpentry is a side passion of mine. Actually. Really? I, yeah, I love, love really? carpentry. I grew up with uh, carpentry in my uh, in my life through my dad and uh, okay. sawdust in my lungs through my dad. Wow. So, yeah. So, uh, unfortunately for me, uh, fortunately for me, my dad's one of those guys 
it sounds like your dad as well, you know, can build anything. He built a plane at one point. I'm not even wow. joking, an airplane really? that you could fly. I think he even like cut the bolts and like it's crazy. Um, and he, yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think I was just a little too young when he was, I mean, we had our shop in our basement had every machine, everything. I mean, we had, uh, you know, the normal saws and drills and stuff, but like when we go ice skating, he would sharpen our skates, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. and I mean, he could he'd make anything. In fact, um, it's really where I'm sure I get my entrepreneurial spirit from. Uh, when I was six years old, he got laid off from his job. Now that was Giddings and Lewis. They had a big strike back in 1975. Now I was six years old and I thought, you know, last name being Lewis, I thought, man, dad, how bad you got to be to get laid off from your own company. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I really thought that, but, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, but you know, I was kind of thinking, well, I, cause I, I, I honestly, I did think it somehow was related to us. Turns out no relation. <laughs> sure. Um, but, uh, yeah. So when he, when they went on strike, um, he didn't want to break the, break the picket line and they were calling him back to work. They didn't want to break the line or at least that's my memory of it. So he went into business for himself, opened up a store in the front of our house, started making, um, birdhouse kits out of wood huh. um and grandfather clock kits cool um, yeah and then and i remember the day he opened the store my my sister uh was i think 13 yeah i think 13 because this was fast forward a couple years when he finally opened the store maybe i might have some of these details maybe she was 11 um because she's only five years older than me so at any rate, uh, she was behind the counter waiting for customers to come in. It was in the front of our house. <laughs> um, and uh, when we would get a big order, and this is during the 80s when there, there was, uh, oh, no, no, uh, 70s, or late 70s, when hodgepodging. Have you ever heard that term, hodgepodging? I mean, uh Kinda. Yeah, I've heard of that term. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, oh, he hodgepodge it together. Well, sure. no, there, there's yeah. a there's an art technique or a, a technique for, you know, putting a surface on something called hodgepodging, and I might be describing it wrong. Is it like paper? I think, it's, know, like... I think it's like tape. <laughs> sure, okay. <laughs> I don't remember. I think it's like masking tape and then you varnish it or something. But yeah. anyway, so there's this hodgepodge. Well, we would, he, my dad would get a big order, uh, and uh, I remember we'd get like a thousand pieces of of like a plaque that he would have to make. So he would, you know, uh, cut them, uh, grind them, whatever. I don't even know. Like I, I'm, I'm butchering this. Um, but he would, he would make a, this beautiful plaque and then they would be sanded and then they would get dunked in a big, t uh, tub of, uh, of stain and then they'd have to be dry, dried. So as a kid, I'd be walking in my hands with like, you know, bricks of these things. Like I was, yeah. you know, at Fort Knox with the gold, gold, uh, bars and you know, we'd be everybody, the whole family was involved. The day he opened his business, I sat on the heat register and when people came in, I offered for them to buy a gourd, uh, that's like a dried out stuff yeah. like squash or whatever. Sure. And, uh, you know, and these are things that had come from our garden, mm -hmm. um, offered for them to buy, you know, do you want to buy a gourd? <laughs> <laughs> I had a couple pity buys. Tiny Lance. Yeah. Oh yeah. Selling then, gourds. Oh yeah. Yep. Selling gourds on the on the heat register. Fond fond memories. Um. And you know, fast forward. Now that was back in nineteen. Uh, it had to be like uh, seventy six, seventy. I think it was seventy seven, somewhere in there. And uh, I apologize to my family for messing those dates up. But I was young. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> um. And so then. Uh, he ended up opening a, a larger score, uh, store, you know, built the business up. Uh, my sister now owns the business and has, uh, you know, had purchased it from uh, my parents a number of years ago and has been successfully running it with, um, with her husband. And uh, yeah, so all of that, totally off the subject. But the point was when my, <laughs> when my dad had his shop, um, I wasn't like in the right age or mindset or whatever to really learn those skills. I wasn't ready for it. Uh, and so I, I missed out on all this great mentoring that he would have happily done. And I just missed out on that's, you know, whatever, just uh, bad timing. Uh, yeah. but I, but I did get the entrepreneurial spirit from him and, uh, have been able to, um, you know, kind of pump his brain throughout the years on various things. And, uh, we've had some great discussions. Uh, yeah, that's that awesome. time, so. yeah, that's awesome. Really yeah, it's really cool. Um, so, uh, I, I ask everybody a, uh, very serious question as we get towards the end. Um, and we can go as long as you want, but, uh, you know, I, I, I do want to be mindful of people's time too. So super soft or extra strong. And I'm talking about toilet paper. What do you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, or do you even know? Do you buy the toilet paper in your house? Is that are those the only two options? Oh no, there's stuff in between. I'm sure there's sandpaper. But that's the only two there's, options. If I had to choose, no, no, you can them. nope. Whatever you want. Okay, um, you can make something up. Nobody will know. I feel like you know 
We use the uh, is it quilted northern. Okay. Uh, That's so the whatever. brand. Yep. And yeah. I mean, they, I think they have. A, I think they're a softer kind of. Yeah, it's kind of softer, but it's yeah. still. I like more of a manly toilet strong. paper. Oh, is that right? <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm, I'm totally being silly. Jeez, yeah. Well, I mean, what does that even mean? Lance's yeah. kingdom. You know, yeah. Like manly toilet great. paper here. Yep, yep. Did uh, you guys uh, have enough? Or Yeah, so um, just as a great question. Um, uh, do you need some? Is that, is that why you're asking? Or do I have to check your bags <laughs> before you leave? Came <laughs> yeah. You're not the only one. Yeah. Um, I can hook you up, man. Champion video. We're everywhere, and we got toilet paper. Um, I heard there's a pizza place that if you bought a large pizza, they included a roll of toilet paper or something. Um, get this, where you're getting married, Bridgewood, yeah. connected to Ground Round, Sure, they're giving free toilet that's paper right. with delivery. Yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> I heard that too. Yeah. No, we um, we were fortunate. Uh, a couple weeks before this all went downhill really fast, um, my wife was pretty plugged into, um, you know, she's a voracious reader, and... Um, she she said, you know, we, we should probably stock up on two weeks. You know, we were looking at what was going on in China. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and they talk about, well, if you get the virus, you need to um, to self-quarantine. Self-quarantine's two weeks. So she's, and, you know, beyond the effect that would have on our business and blah, <laughs> I wish now, right? I wish that's all it was. Um, but, uh, you know, she said we should stock up two weeks of food. And I said, okay, so we're in the grocery store and we're, we're getting two weeks worth of food, whatever that means. Cause we usually go to the grocery store like every two, three days, sometimes every day, you know, yeah. get some fresh produce, yeah. get whatever we're cooking that day, bring it home. And you know, we don't have kids. So we, we have that luxury where we're not constantly, you know, give me, give me, give me, I need yeah. this, I need this, yeah. take me to this practice, take me to that practice. I need $10. We, we don't have, we're just selfish, uh, uh t- two selfish people married. <laughs> no, we are. Um, <laughs> I'll be the first to admit it. Um, and uh, so we're there, and I say, we should pick up some toilet paper. Now, I mentioned this in one of the other shows, too. So uh, for those of you that are watching all of our shows, uh, you get to hear the story again. So, yeah, I, and she goes, why? And I said, well, if you said two weeks, we need two weeks of everything, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, and if you got the coronavirus, I'm guessing you're going to be on the corona throne a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for real though i mean it, yeah. it's kind of crazy yeah and i don't mean to make light of what's going no. on uh, that's my way of dealing with it um so you know i like to make fun of myself i like to make fun of other people <laughs> i like to i like to make fun of the situation but it is a very serious thing yeah. um, hey you got any advice for someone out there that wants to start their own business definitely um the when i talk to an aspiring or um a new business owner, entrepreneur, the the thing, and it kind of depends on, actually, no, it doesn't. Any business that you want to start, um, find a way to test it before you dive mm-hmm. all in. Um, especially in technology, I kind of have this rule of mine um, that I've learned the hard way, but the rule of mine is you need to test it. You need to get someone to either pay you for it or hit some metric that you've set mm-hmm. um, with uh, without coding it. Right, yeah. or writing a single line of code. Wow. Um, so for me, in the Proceed example, or for Proceed, you know, I actually used Snapchat okay. um, as my my prototype. They, and, they just had to look at it really quick, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I mean, they sent, you know, they I would use Snapchat to document these and right. then did a little what we call Wizard of Oz or Man Behind the Curtain action where yeah, I yeah. would download them and then host them on a new okay. website. Yeah, yeah. So it seemed yeah. very much like, oh, I send it to this Snapchat right, right, right. account um, and then it shows up on the website. Perfect. Yeah. You know, um, but, you know, that was a very manual labor intensive right but no, no code, code was written yet yeah uh, way of testing it which um is something i'd recommend to any any business owner and the the biggest thing like i was just talking to someone the other day about this where they you know they said well i don't know how i could this is such an original idea that i there's no way i could test this yeah there's always a way to test right it. yeah um you know you basically you need to prove that your customer exists right and that they and they are, want it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That they're so uh, they, the problem that you're going to fix is something that they actually open their wallet for. Because the only thing that makes a business a business is do you make money? Right. Yeah, and that's a hard. Otherwise, that's, it's a hobby. Yeah, and and that's hard for a lot of people. That was hard for me to learn, and it, it really took for me going from my martial art. Uh, club or school, which I had a fairly large one, and it was successful in its own right. But I still was had the mentality of a kid. 
because I started it when I was a kid. And it really wasn't until I started the video production company when there was overlap there where I said, you know, the only reason I'm getting into the video production company is because, you know, I enjoy doing it, but I'm not going to continue doing it if I can't make a living doing it. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's something that's always impressed me about you is that you, um, you know, you don't get emotionally caught up. Uh, you know, for example, if, if you would have done your testing, um, you know, with, with the, you know, not writing any code using Snapchat, little behind the scenes stuff to make it look like, you know, it's working. Had you not done your, had you done your testing and found that nobody wanted it, you'd have scrapped it as my guess, right? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then on to 999 other ideas, right? <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, uh, you always think it's a good idea. I mean, yeah. you, you never start heading down the path if you think, oh, this is a bad idea. Oh, no, um, people do. People absolutely head down paths that, that they <laughs> well, know in the back of their head. Yeah, true. But they've I, invested time and energy. Yeah, but I think that's the thing. It's just, it's only going to get worse, yeah. you know, and, and it's all about de-risking your idea. For me, it was, I needed to de-risk the idea for Proceed in order to attract developer partners. Yeah. Right, like no developer. Because it wasn't just you. Yeah, I mean, and I don't have the technical skills to develop it into something mm -hmm. like I needed people with, yeah. um, you know, web application development skills. So, um, for me, it's like, well, I needed to, I needed to de-risk the idea, make it yeah. super attractive so I could be like, Hey, you want a piece of this? Yeah. You know, and, and, uh, I'm not going to pay you in cash. I'm going to pay you in equity. Yeah. Um, and so for me, that was an important part of starting proceed was attract, yeah. you know, the partners to it. And the only, I mean, um, especially technical people, uh, they look at, they look at this stuff and it, all it is, is data for them. Right. Yeah. I mean, not always the case. I, I have two really awesome business partners today, mm -hmm. um, that are very interested in every aspect of the business, not cool. just the technical side. But when, when you're a technical person and like, you know, just a business person in general, um, and many people. Yeah. Anyways, but you know, you you are always looking at um, what what is what is the what is the, the ROI going to be, you yeah. know, and is there a good chance of hitting it? Yeah. Well, you know, another way to look at it too is if you can't make a, a business out of it where there is profit, then you can't sustain those jobs of people that are hoping that they're going to keep a job with you. You know, that you yeah. have a duty to the people that you're employing. And, uh, how, do you ever, um, do you ever run into a situation where you just feel overwhelmed? Um, like overwhelmed, uh, like with too much anxiety or. Oh, sure. You know. Um, just, yeah. I mean, what's, what's your weak point? What's your kryptonite? Definitely. I, I think I do get overwhelmed. Um, but I think I'm pretty good at managing stress and anxiety. Yeah. Um, but... I've never seen you worked up. Never. <laughs> I mean, you always seem well, pretty, that. pretty even keel. Yeah, you know, I think that's a big part. Oh of it. no! Wait a second. I remember a time. <laughs> I do. I totally remember a time. I, I mean, in the production world, I definitely got worked yeah. up. I think that was p partially why I. <laughs> no, it was. It was really. It was really. It was cool what you did, though. Uh, I got there uh, to Xavier, and you remember you were in high school at Xavier at the time, and upstairs where we usually put our video cameras, you knew it was a mess. <laughs> and you, you didn't get super worked up, but you're like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. It's so messy up there. I'm so embarrassed. I didn't get a chance to clean and nobody else cleaned. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was fine. It was how it was normally. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know, I, but you can't, you can't let things bother you too much. Um, right. You know, it's all about, I mean, it goes back to what we talked about earlier. It's how you respond, right? Yeah. You can yep. decide to, you know, get locked up and um, kind of choked by your on anxiety or you can fix it. I've never had a problem with, uh, with the, well, I shouldn't say I've never had a problem with anxiety, but I've never had a, a big problem with anxiety. Certainly not on a job, but, uh, but I can get grumpy for sure when I'm in production, you know, I, and the uh, thing is, is I get very grumpy yeah. Yeah, during I, tech weeks. So. <laughs> I am the worst to the people closest to me. Yeah, I am. I'm the worst. And, you know, to the point where I'm like, I need two different color hats. I have a red hat and a green hat. If I'm wearing the green hat, you can approach me. If I'm wearing the red hat, do not approach. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, like someone brand new, you know, that doesn't know the ropes. Uh, you know, I'm like, I don't expect anything out of them. But then someone that's, uh, and unfortunately, you know, Kimberly and I work yeah. in the business together. <laughs> she gets the brunt end of it quite a bit. Um, yeah. And uh, that's not fair. Uh, and she's been a pretty good sport over all that. So, yeah. uh, um, it so, really rocks. I'll say 
say that. Oh yeah, is Kimberly yeah. listening? Where? Oh yeah, I'm sure yeah. she is. It's a it's a, a little bit of a dis- delay, um, but uh, I do want to just meant. Uh, oh oh, so I'm looking at our our chat here. Uh, my sister is my older sister who runs the business is watching. Awesome. Uh, that's uh, so anybody that's looking at the chat that's Gallery and Frame Shop, and I was saying hodgepodge. <laughs> I knew I had this all wrong. It's modgepodge. <laughs> and now that I'm thinking about it, I think it's actually like a gluey kind of. Th- I don't even yeah, know. I'm yeah. messing it up. But anyway, we also had a guy named AJ Rom. Do you know AJ by yeah, any chance? AJ. Oh, you, how do you know him? He, um, yeah, through the production world again. Nice. And it worked for the same uh, live oh, I, sound and light production. He's company. done something at Fox Theater, I think, right? And he works at UW Fox, yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's crying over Tech Week. He also said, I like how the commercial one ply toilet paper isn't even an option. Why is it even made? Uh, yeah, I would have to agree. I'm not a one ply kind of guy. <laughs> Really? I saw you as kind of a one-ply kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we were over at a friend's house uh, for game night. Oh, game night. How great would that be? Oh, again, right? man. A thing of the past. It's all done online now. <laughs> um, so uh, we can reminisce. Yeah. We were at game, game night with a friend and uh, a number of weeks ago, well, a couple months ago, actually, and uh, we got talking about toilet paper, and I don't know... I probably was stirring the pot. <laughs> and I said, do you guys crumple or fold? And... <laughs> There were some people in the household that said fold, and I'm like, yeah, you guys are psychopaths. Like, anybody, do you fold? Do you fold? You probably do. You do. You strike me as the kind of guy who folds, not because you're a psychopath. Is there another option? Yeah, you just crumple it all up. (laughs) It seems less efficient. It is less efficient. So uh, I could tell you a little bit more about their strategy and technique, but I just can't even, like, I can't even begin to tell you because it just, like, I'm like, what if you slip? What if you, you know, I have so many questions. But anyway. Um, you know, there are definitely different difference between folders and, uh, and crumplers. I am a crumpler. Uh, but now in the, in the age of Corona, I am definitely rethinking that. Um, but, uh, Hey Andrew, anything else you want to talk about or bring up before we bring the show to a close? No, I mean, uh, thanks a lot for having me again, Lance. Um, you know, it, it, it's fun to be able to do these kind of things, yeah. um, to kind of normalize things a yeah. little bit and, yep. and talk with good friends. Um, you know, uh, I, I will just say this, um, you know, one of the things I've personally been missing a lot is, uh, is all the networking yeah. and, you know, the, the person, to, you know, face to face time with people. Yeah. Um, but there have been some really innovative ways to connect out there through yeah. digital networking groups, you know, things like that. Um, so if, if you're like me and you're missing the networking, yeah. um, and, and those, uh, business friends that you've made, yep. um, or, you know, get out there, find those virtual networking opportunities because they, they do yeah. help and they, they are nice. And I want to add, um, you know, if you're watching the show, just think about the people maybe who nobody's checking in with. True. Give them a call. Yeah. Um, you know, because, uh, you know, normally they might be somewhat isolated and now they're forced to be more isolated. Check in with them. Um, hey, you're getting married in uh, next year. Right? Yeah, 2021. Yeah. So, burning question: Is your fiance going to use the Proceed app to micromanage the bridesmaids? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jen has an account. I uh, don't, yes, uh, nice. I don't have eyes on it though, so I don't know uh, what she is. <laughs> Jen, you need to use the Proceed app <laughs> to show your bridesmaids like the proper uh, dress attire or maybe the proper um, earrings they should be wearing and what is acceptable and unacceptable behavior on the dance floor. I think she, uh, she'll, she would tell you very quickly that she would be making these things for me. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's the other you part know, too. So how to cook dinner. Okay. There you go. How to do laundry. <laughs> these kind of things. Andrew, it was great sitting down with you. I really, uh, really enjoyed our time together. I wish we could do it more often. Um, we have not met Jen yet. We we're really would like to meet her we'll at some point. Change that. For yeah. Sure. yeah. Yeah. Maybe after Corona. Um, <laughs> I'm going to just do a quick show wrap. Um, so just hit tight there. I am going to mute your audio in just a moment. Um, thanks a lot, Lance. Yeah. Thank you. I hope I mute yours and not mine. Um, and, uh, just a final word though with Andrew, uh, I give you the final word. Uh, thanks a lot. Yeah. Good to be here. I was going to give you the final word, but I, now I got to talk through the slow, painful process of me getting to the right camera. <laughs> oh, oh <sorry. laughs> all right. Final word, Andrew. Uh, you know, check us out. Proceed app. Love to hear from you uh, and just connect with anyone watching as well. Um, thanks. Uh, if you 
if you're here watching from uh, one of my social channels or some one of my connections, uh, thanks for showing up today. And uh, we'll see you guys on the other end. All right. That was Andrew Schmitz, uh, co-founder of Proceed.app. He sat down with me for, oh, this is our longest interview ever. We sat down for an hour. Really appreciate if you stuck it all the way to the end. Um, and I just want to mention that make sure you're taking care of yourself. Wash your hands, keep your distance from people, use, uh, use um, uh, antibacterial wipes, uh, make sure you're taking care of yourself, but also take care of uh, the people around you too. Check in with people you haven't checked in with um, in a while. We don't know if we're going to do another live show. We'll probably do at least one more because I can have Kimberly on yet. We've been kind of saving her and uh, um, for the final moments, um, but uh, everybody's going on lockdown. We don't know. I think it might be starting tomorrow or Tuesday, Wednesday, um, or Wednesday, Thursday, I mean. So not sure if we're going to keep having people in. We might uh, do some remote ins. I'm not sure, but I'm going to keep producing content, whether it's with a guest or not. Uh, so anything that you would like to see content produced by, um, like any subjects, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I might maybe just do some news recaps, maybe do some review product reviews, stuff like that. I'm having fun doing it. Uh, it gives me something to keep from going stir crazy. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm Lance Lewis with Champion Video, and I wish you all well.